Well, we are here at that point in the summer where it starts to wind down and we're in that limbo phase between soccer camp and the first day of school. This is our chance to savor some unscheduled time with our family, but the flip side of that is that we're lacking a routine and that leaves our kids often saying to us, I'm so bored all month long. I aim to not only share some great kids activities with you, but also shift our mindset surrounding boredom. So if that sounds good to you, I invite you to stick around and let's get into it. What is up, Speaker Fam, and welcome to another episode of the Speak Organize podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Summers, professional organizer, decluttering expert, and productivity based life coach. I like to speak organized to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business of tidying. And I've got those special offers that I'm going to roll for you before we get started. Please go ahead and look at the screen of your device, however, you are watching or listening to this podcast today. Tap that little subscribe subscribe button so that you aren't missing any new episodes. I am putting out new episodes of the podcast at least two to three times per month. I've got new YouTube videos out every single week. I don't want you guys to miss out on any of that good stuff. And I've also got a bunch of education and resources that I love to provide my community members through I Speak Organize. So I'll get you guys all up to speed on that stuff. As you scroll through and check out the show notes of the podcast or the description of the YouTube video, you'll find a link to my free Facebook group. It is an awesome, very supportive community. It's free to join. It's great for anybody who's on a decluttering and organizing journey, somebody who really appreciates having some inspiration and ideas to help them organize and become more productive in their lives, as well as if you are interested in starting your own professional organizing business. I'm sure some of you are here who have found me on YouTube as your go-to gal with all things pro organizing business. And there are lots of people just like you inside that Facebook group as well asking questions and I will be holding some free training for you this summer. If you join that group, please feel free to chime in and let me know what it is you're interested in learning in that group. I also have a couple other special offers for everybody listening and watching today. The first one is a discount code to my exclusive mini course, Better Habits in 30 Days. This actually is something that will help you with procrastination in general and working towards your goals for the rest of the year. And this could be in your laundry routine. It could be in your exercise routine. It could be your schedule in general or working on a big decluttering project like your garage or the backyard or really whatever it is. That mini course is meant to help you jumpstart that motivation and fight procrastination to get through that project or get through those hurdles in 30 days. And it's one of the most affordable courses that I I offer online and it's packed full of lots of useful information, tips, and accountability to help you get through those tasks and succeed with your goals. So go ahead and check out the link to that in the description of the show notes, as well as the description of the YouTube video. And you can use discount code earlybird 20 22 and that will give you five dollars off your purchase there so be sure to check that out if you have any questions please comment down below and let me know all right so this episode is going to start with a little mindset session on shifting our thoughts and ideas around boredom for our kids and it's actually something that is really important for their development i had a friend once comment on an instagram post about a year ago and she said that boredom is a gift that we give our children and i thought that was such a great way of looking at it. And so I wrote an article about it a couple of months ago, and that's sort of what I'm pulling this podcast episode from and did a bit of research into the psychological benefits of boredom. And it really does help our kids with their creativity, conjuring up new ways of doing and thinking about things. It helps them develop self-motivation, which is super important. It helps them with their problem-solving skills because they're having to obviously come up with 
new ways of interacting with the world around them and just developing that ability to be independent and capable. And all of this is a recipe for our kids to help develop their authentic selves and discover what their interests are. It's really just a good thing for them. And it's also good for us, all the pressure that we find ourselves under as parents to make sure that our kids are involved in all the right activities and keeping up with all the rest of them and allowing them a chance to just be themselves and develop that authenticity through boredom is such a good thing. However, I realize that it's easier said than done and it's nice to have at least a few ideas of how to help nurture and foster that creativity with your kids. So today I wanna talk through a few activities that you can help your kids with through the end of summer to keep them thinking creatively, to help them engage and get ready for the school year and just stop saying they're bored all the time. So when I made this list, I wanted to make sure that for the most part, we're eliminating the use of electronics because our kids are constantly nose first into some tablet or phone or computer game or what have you. And we want to try and enjoy those last few precious moments of summer where there's tons of sun and warmth and get our kids outside. So number one on this list is to collect and paint rocks to brighten up the neighborhood. I know I love that, my kids love it and it's a great thing that you can do outside, pick up a pack of paints from the local craft store and some paint brushes and just go to town. They can paint them as little animals or they can paint scenes, sky's the limit, and it's always fun to discover them along the way on your evening walks after dinner. Number two on the list is to create a backyard scavenger hunt. Doesn't need to be anything super fancy. It could be anywhere between 10 and 20 different items that they need to find. You can allow your kids to get in on this process. They can even design the scavenger hunt themselves if they're a little bit older and play with different kids throughout the neighborhood, meet some new families, and just have a really good time again totally outside. And number three is something that I used to do as a kid and spent hours and days in the summer doing this with my friends. And that was to create a play and set up the stage and put on a production for the neighbors at the end of the summer. You can even buy playbooks and memorize the lines. You can write your own little play, use the deck and some sheets as curtains, get some music going and just be as creative as you want. The next few things on this list are are designed to help your kids think creatively and engage with their community. And the first one is to create a series of bookmarks for your favorite book collection. That's a really easy one. It's a nice, easy craft. And if you wanna get extra fancy, and it's not as, as difficult as it sounds, you can pick up a laminating machine. This is my Scotch brand one that I picked up for maybe 20 bucks on Amazon with the laminating sheets. And that way you can help keep their bookmarks protected. You can press flowers in there and just get real fancy with your design if you want to. Next super fun thing to do for them is to design a board game. It could be any type of game, a card game, it could be a word game, you could design a spinner for it if you want to, or use dice, really, again, sky's the limit, let them design a game and teach it to the whole family to play for a family game night or play with their friends at a sleepover, whatever they want. Number three on this list is for your kids to write a letter to either a friend, a distant family member, or a soldier. And I can't think of a more fun and sweet way to engage with people in their community that they would never otherwise meet or see as often and it's a great way to connect with your friends and family and get your kids working on their writing skills it's a total win-win the last few activities that i have for you guys on this list today are going to keep your kids learning and get them engaging in education just in time for the school year Number one on this list is to try the toothpick STEM challenge. And there are tons of tutorials on how to do this on YouTube. The basic idea is to use toothpicks and either Play-Doh or marshmallows to construct different types of structures, basically. I will link to a couple of videos that I have found that were really fun and easy for this challenge on YouTube. Next on the list, one of my personal favorites, because who doesn't love pizza, is DIY Pizza Night. And your kids can 
can design the menu, they can shop for the ingredients, and if they're old enough, they can make the entire dinner for you. It's a great way to get them in the kitchen. If you have picky eaters in your family, like I do, getting your kids in the kitchen and learning how to cook their own food is one of the easiest ways to overcome that, and it's super fun, low stress activity and it's gonna feed everybody, which is gonna make everybody a lot happier, less hangry. The last idea on this list is a little chemistry experiment where your kids will learn how to make their very own bubble solution. I don't know, a single kid that doesn't love bubbles, especially if you have a bubble gun or whatever. You can also make your own wands, bubble wands with this. And I have a great tutorial that I will link for you, again, in the show notes and the description of the YouTube video. There's tons of different ideas and materials that you will likely have laying around your house already to make the bubbles. They're a lot easier to make than I would have originally thought, and it'll save you some cash as well. All right, fam, that is nine activities. That should be more than enough to get us through the rest of the summer. Bust that boredom so we can stop listening to our children constantly saying, mom, dad, I'm bored all the time. This should really, really help and be a lot of fun for everybody. You know that I love to over deliver, so I've got a bonus tip for you. I call this the boredom busting jar, where you can actually write out a lot of these ideas. You can take all nine of these and add some of your own, get a set of popsicle sticks or even just some simple strips of paper, write these different activities down on the popsicle sticks or the, the paper and stick it in the jar. And anytime the your kids say the B word, go tell them to go to the jar and pick out one of the activities. And so it can be like a little additional game, something fun for them to pick the activity for the day, whatever it happens to be. I have found it to be very effective in all the years that I have spent working with children. I was a teacher, a dance teacher for almost 20 years, and I would do similar activities with my kids using something like the board and busting jar, and I've done it with clients as well for my organizing business. So hopefully that helps you super fun. I definitely recommend that you give it a try. Thank you all so much for sticking around for this podcast episode. It has been an honor to have your time today. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, comment down below. If you guys have any additional activity ideas, I would love to hear them. Our other subscriber friends would love to hear them. So be sure to let us in on some of your secrets and add those things to our list for our own boredom busting jars. That would be so awesome. And don't forget to join my free Facebook group. Come hang out in there with me. Follow along on Instagram. Come and join my email list. All of those are great ways to stay in touch with me and learn about all of the different resources and giveaways and fun stuff that I have available for you through I Speak Organized. Beyond that, I will see you guys in the next episode and I hope that you have a fabulous day. Take care.